Hello, brothers and sisters in Hardwell's family. This is a follow-up teaching from the messages Jesus gave us about spiritual husbands and wives. He truly is taking heart dwellers into deeper levels of prayer and deliverance. You see, the Lord is revealing this because many of you are suffering from different assignments in your life, in your family, and in your marriage that may be a result of this very spirit and demonic covenant. You may have listened to the message thinking, well, I'm not married, it doesn't affect me. Or I'm single and still a virgin, this message doesn't affect me. Or I was a virgin, or both me and my husband were virgins before we got married, it doesn't affect me. However, with any of these rebuttals, it still can. If before you came to Jesus, you lived a life of sin and sexual morality of any kind, then you have one or some. If you have had a succubus or incubus dream, where someone male or female or something comes and defiles you, wants to get intimate with you via a kiss or touch, or sleeps with you in a dream, then you definitely have one. Like Jesus said in his mercy, he can take on this battle for some of us, and he doesn't make us aware of it, what's going on spiritually. So you may have that, but never experience anything. I never experienced any of these things until I gave my life to Jesus. Before, I had only one dream like that in my adolescence, but beyond that, I didn't. I would have never known if it wasn't for the mercy of God to reveal those things in the spirit that have been hidden from me by the demons. You see, demons love to stay hidden. If they can oppress, possess, and influence a soul without being recognized, that is their ultimate goal. Just like Satan desires that all the world would see him as a figment of imagination, not a real creature who's a fallen angel with wicked intentions fighting humanity for its soul to be damned along with him. Of course he wouldn't want that to be revealed. Why? Revelation brings a person power to do something about what they have received. When Satan, his minions, and his influence in your life stays hidden, then he has full reign to do with you as he pleases, to continue to steal from you, frustrate you, oppress you, take your happiness and joy, and keep you in bondage. Furthermore, you become his prisoner. If a soldier doesn't recognize that he's in battle and walks into enemy territory and gets captured, but doesn't see the bullets flying, and doesn't see his opponent, and doesn't see the prison walls he's sitting in as a prisoner of war, they can keep that soldier enslaved and injured with whatever idea or suggestion as long as he doesn't know the truth. I believe that is why the Lord is bringing these tactics of spiritual warfare up in this season because many of us have become captive for so long, even generationally, to these influences and didn't know it. And Jesus wants us to be set free. So before we go into giving these demonic spirits a divorce decree and breaking your covenant, With them, it's important you know what they are and where they could have come from to gain access in your life so they can close any door that's still open and seal it off, even for the next generation, your children, younger siblings, or grandchildren's lives, and that of your spouse as well. I would like to first start with soul ties because many of you may be familiar in hearing about soul ties. Some of you may have heard or done the exercise before by breaking every soul tie you had with people from your past after you gave your life to Jesus, but are still having symptoms of oppression in your life, not realizing that it comes from a covenant you never broke with a spiritual husband or wife that you have. So soul tie can be thought of this way. A soul tie is an invisible chain that binds you to another person spiritually, mentally, and physically, or I would like to say emotionally, sexually, and metaphysically. An example of a sota can actually be found in scripture, 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. It says that Jonathan loved David like his own soul. A sota can be divinely appointed, or can be demonically appointed. Jonathan and David's relationship was not at all sexual in nature but a platonic, deep spiritual friendship that God put together. It was a very good soul tie, a metaphysical and an emotional one. That's what I want to touch on first. You can have an emotional soul tie with chosen souls that God puts in your life on your spiritual journey. I realized in my own life that the Lord has blessed me to have deep spiritual friendships like this. Truly, where our soul ties are so beautiful and genuine. These persons, the Lord has put me on their heart, and they carry my burdens as I carry theirs. He gives us insight to one another's life as to our struggles and what we're going through. 
we can continually encourage one another and love each other in the purest way to do God's will here on earth. That is a good soul tie. We form soul ties through our family, a parent and child soul tie, sibling soul ties, and so forth. And sometimes that can be bad if there's trauma, manipulation, and pain. Once we come to Christ, we must sever that soul tie to grow. Jesus said a soul tie deals with the will, mind, and emotions. If it's a negative soul tie, you're constantly succumb to that person's will. You're constantly manipulating your mind by their suggestions or words they have spoken over you and what they tell you. They can rule your emotions by what they do or don't do. It's toxic. And sometimes you can have that in your family. Many times we all incur that in a relationship with a soul that is wounded. You wound one another's soul and you walk away more damaged than healed and strengthened. So let's say in your marriage, your spouse is always prone to listen to their parents than you. Your husband always runs to his mom for advice and values her advice more than yours. Or your wife always listens to the counsel of her mother than you. If you see in your in-laws bringing in negative fruit into your marriage because of the connection they have with your spouse, then that's a soul tie that must be severed. You are called to be one. There's a soul tie in marriage that is necessary. You both becoming one flesh, and that is only reserved for husband and wife and God in a marriage. Also, if you grew up in a dysfunctional home, you constantly receive negative affirmation, negative words spoken over you, that you're worthless, you're stupid, you wouldn't amount to anything, you're not pretty enough, and it's now affecting your life as the words we play on autopilot in your mind or it has shaped your identity. You must sever that soul tie of that person from you. Another emotional soul tie can be of an ex that you have that keeps showing up in your dreams or you find yourself thinking of them from time to time, missing them. And if you guys were never intimate, this is an emotional soul tie that needs to be severed. It can be in friendships too that are not fruitful in nature. Maybe there's someone you befriended who always talked down on you, who belittled you, was jealous towards you, and your friendship has ended, but you find yourself crippled by the things they said or their actions, or your plays in your mind or even your dreams. You must sever that soul tie. Then there's a the metaphysical soul tie. Metaphysical connection with someone means is a strong pull towards that person that it's beyond physical. Once again, there can be godly, divinely appointed ones like Jonathan and David, when you meet someone, the Holy Spirit prompts you to connect with them, or naturally it happens and you form a strong, godly, pure bond that is the work of the Holy Spirit. But for these purposes, we're talking about negative ones. Jesus to Mother Claire said in a message about spiritual warfare that demons can project electromagnetic energy to incite temptation to lust, arousal, stimulation of any kind. So that is why you can meet someone and immediately be drawn to them. And that's how many affairs start. Or you plan on meeting up with someone from your past, or you once had a connection with, telling yourself, oh, nothing will happen. Then you find yourselves touching one another, making out, because as you sat with that person, you had a strong desire and acted on impulse. Hence the word impulse. It was an electromagnetic projection that gave you that impulse from the demons and sensation in your body to make you desire that person so strongly drawn to them to make you fall. So this soul tie doesn't always have to be sexual in nature, but there is an energy exchange between the two of you, where you can meet someone and you connect with them on a deep level. You have the same energy and desires. You feel something when they're around or your heart jumps when you see them or think of them. So you may not have even been physical with this person. However, now in your marriage or even in your single life, you can't seem to get them off your mind. It can be a coworker or a colleague and the strong pull towards them that you know can possibly even turn to lust. It's important you sever this metaphysical soul tie. You can even do this on behalf of your spouse. Lastly, there's the sexual soul ties with every person you have become intimate with or have engaged in any sexual moral act. You merely form a soul tie with that person. And that is why the Lord says any sin of sexual morality is sin against your own body because your body is meant to be for the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6.18 A temple of purity and monogamy only to God kept in purity until you're given to marriage. This will lead into the next message about spiritual husbands and wives. I have done the severing of the soul ties exercises a few times before I got married in preparation to give myself completely to God and to my husband. When the Lord is drawing us together before we got married, we discussed our past and through conversations I was given names of people that he had a connection with in one way or the other, emotionally or otherwise. 
and the Lord had me write down all the names and begin to break the soul ties of these people off my future spouse, as I mentioned them each by name. And I was told by Mother Elizabeth the Lord is saying to also break the metaphysical soul ties. So I broke the emotional, metaphysical, and sexual soul ties of these people and asked the Lord to remove them one by one. And he did. That's how I was able to get married. But even after marriage, I had to say this prayer daily because the enemy will use people from your past to bring temptations to you and your spouse. So you can do this not only for yourself, but even for your spouse. You don't have to know all of the names or even any, but you have authority over your spouse's body. You guys are one flesh. So you want to pray and ask the Lord to break every metaphysical, emotional, and sexual soul tie your spouse still has. If you know names, mention the names of the people. And ask the Lord to knit you and your spouse's soul together like Jonathan and David, that your spouse will love you alone as if your soul was theirs. You can say that. It's powerful and it's scriptural. I will discuss spiritual husbands and wives in the following up message. What are they and where they can come from before we say the prayer to get rid of them? The reason being is I want to ensure that these demons are gone out of your life once and for all. Amen? <laughs> so thank you again for those who have donated to the City of God Project. May God bless you. We have now received eight donations, praise God. And received one more donor who is willing to pay a bit more than the $282 towards the bulldozer for us to at least clear the land. If you remember, I was just asking 20 donors to donate $282 so we can at least start cleaning the land with a bulldozer to rent a bulldozer. So, so far we have three who have agreed and have donated to us. So we're needing, not three. Yes, yeah, so we need 17 donors. <laughs> we're needing 17 donors to make that happen. <laughs> As you guys can see, I'm, I'm terrible with math right now. So please remember us. Think of us. The donation link for GoFundMe is in the description below. God bless you guys until the next message.